Hi there, everyone. This is Chris Schmidt with a continued training for Signal, the new plugin from Grayscale Gorilla. So we're going to talk about the noise tab, the noise modifier, my favorite. So I have a really simple scene here. It's just a sphere and a cone and a cube, and they're colored. Uh, and but I, I really like the setup for kind of visualizing what Signal is doing. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go to MoGraph and I'm going to create a tracer. This is all just kind of set up. I'm going to create a tracer and I'm going to set this to not trace the vertices. So it'll just trace the uh, center point. And I'm actually going to add a signal to this. This isn't really part of the, the training. Um, but uh, what do I want this to do? I want this to drive the coordinate X of this current tracer. And I want that to travel to really big number, like 5,000. And I want this to be linear. And now, in the simplest form, if I hit play, what's happening is the tracer is traveling to the right constantly. And it's just going to give us a good visual feedback for what the noise modifier is doing. Uh, one last thing, I'm going to uh, go to my basic tab in the tracer, and I'm going to set it to nice lime green so it shows up real well. Awesome. So, how do we begin? Well, I'm going to click on our cube. Actually, I should put it on the top since it looks better if they're in visual order. So, that's on the top. And I'm going to save. I'm going to, I'm going to create a new signal tag on the cube. So I'm going to create signal. And what do we want to drive? I want to drive the Y position. That's going to be the best way to visualize this. So I'm going to grab Y. Drop in a signal tag. It's going to be P for position. And now we're going to, right away, it's, you see it's set to 0, 0 on Y. No animation. So let's add a modifier. Our very first modifier, noise. So it creates a brand new tab. So we got a new noise tab. Now what's really cool about Signal is that these tabs are being created dynamically. We don't have a limit. If you want to make 100 noise tabs, I don't know why you would, but if you want to make 100 noise tabs, you totally could. You make an unlimited number of these in any combination that you want. But anyway, we've now created a new tab. So let's go over a couple settings here. We've got, what is it? It's modifier type is noise. You can actually, actually change this to any of the other types of modifiers at any given point. We have the name of it. You can change the name of it here and I'll actually change the name of the tab above it. Uh, we have the strength, which is how much it's being applied. And then we have the variation. So why don't we go ahead and add in some variation? I'm not sure what a good number would be. So let's just try 200. And I'm going to go ahead and actually we'll turn off the tracer for a sec since we don't need to see that. And we'll see it's just kind of wiggling up and down a little, not a ton. So we need more, obviously. Let's set that to, let's just go for a thousand. So there we go. Now we got that wiggling up and down. So this is, uh, you know, it's a little bit like wiggle in After Effects. It's, it's based on noise and it's wiggling up and down. So we've got random variation here. So the reason I like using the tracer here is it's a really cool way of visualizing the motion that we've gotten out of this. The only thing that's happening, oh, I totally forgot to set my tracer to additive mode. Now it'll go forever. So this is a good way of seeing exactly the motion that we're getting out. Remember, the only thing that the cube is doing is moving up and down on Y, but now you can see kind of the output that we're getting from it. So that's really cool. So we've got uh, the noise tab. So we can talk about some other things. Now, you know, it started out at zero, 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 which is right here in the center, but this is set to negative and positive, which means it can move up a thousand and down a thousand. So if I turn off negative, it's going to always remain above zero. And that's because zero is what the base tab is at. Uh, we also go only negative, so it'll travel down. If you have both off, then nothing happens. Not surprising. All right, so that's cool. Uh, next up is our loop point. Now, noise, by default, can have a loop point of zero, and a loop point of zero means that it will never repeat. We'll never get the same noise pattern out of it twice, uh, you know, in a single playthrough. It, it will be exactly the same. Like, every time I restart, we'll get that same bump there, but that same bump will never appear again in this play. But we can set a loop point. So we're going to set a relatively small one so that we can clearly see it. So I'm going to set it to maybe 35. So I'm going to rewind all the way and let's see what we get. You're going to see that every 35 frames, we start getting the same motion out of our cube. So we can change it to different random seeds. Of course, we want to restart the timeline to see it. But now you see we get this little trough, trough, trough. So we start getting that repetition. Uh, we can increase the speed. Well, I, we're jumping around the parameters a little bit, but um, yeah, well, the next parameter would be speed, which is how much that is moving up and down. So let's increase that to maybe two. So it's moving faster. And now we can maybe see our loop even better. I'm going to set our loop point to 10. So every 10 frames, we're getting a loop 
happening again and again. We can change the random seed, and every time we change the seed, it's going to be a completely different little motion that we're getting, a different section of noise. So that might be a little fast. So if we get a little more, now we get that repeating. And every seed will be slightly different. We go even faster. Five. Let's go up to a speed of five. And now we're getting crazy fast jitter. But it's still going to loop every 25 frames. Very useful. Set that back to one. Set our loop back to zero so it's never looping. Let's talk about some other parameters. So we just touched upon the speed. So uh, it's built to look good around the speed of one. If we go two, it's going to be twice as fast. Uh, as soon as you start getting around five, it starts moving so fast, it's almost pure jitter. And then uh, for all purposes, if you go to 10, it's pure chaos. It's just moving around uh, super randomly. I guess if you turn your motion blur up high enough, you might be able to see it. Uh, and then, of course, you can go really slow. You can go down to like 0.1, and that's going to be traveling very slowly. All right, let's go back to the speed of one. And we already talked about seed a little bit. We can get completely different patterns of noise by changing the seed. But next up would be the bias. So right now... Uh, and we can't talk about bias without looking at the feedback down here. Right here, we get, we're get we getting visual feedback of what we're currently outputting in this parameter. So this has the potential of going up to 1,000 and negative 1,000. So this is showing how close we're getting to those extremes. And you'll see that we never get overly close. And that's because when you're kind of traveling through a noise... Like, it's mostly gray. Like, you, hitting a perfectly white point on a noise or a perfectly black point is unlikely. Most of the time, it's gray. So we built in this, uh, this parameter here, bias, and that will start pushing it closer to the edges. So if I put 25% in for the bias, we should not only, in the feedback, start seeing it reach these extremes a little more. In the Over here, we're going to see it's reaching a higher point and a lower point more consistently. Now, if we really crank it, a lot of bias. And what's going to happen is we're actually spending very little time in the middle and we're spending all of our time at the extreme. So we're going to be near the peak and near the trough almost all of the time by having this extreme bias way up. So usually I don't crank it up that high unless I have a good reason to. Maybe something like 25 will help you get a little closer to the peaks without being too crazy. But that's bias. All right. Uh, before we get into some of the other uh, more advanced settings, why don't we apply this to our other objects as well. So we can start seeing all of them in a pattern. Now what's going to happen is when I copy this tag over, our base tab isn't going to be changing. So these objects will actually jump up where our cube is and then we'll have to set an offset afterward. So I'm gonna drop that on, the, it's jumped up where the cube is, that's jumped up where the cube is. I'm gonna grab the cone and in our base tab, I'm gonna start adding some negative value to pull it back down again. And then I'm going to grab the uh, blue one and I'm gonna add some negative value there and pull it down to where it was. So that's where it's kind of, it's resting position is. But if I hit play, you see they all have the exact same motion just offset from each other because they all have the exact same noise. Now what's great is we can grab all of these tabs and work with all of them at the same time. So let's say, uh, let's say that looks good, but we want to go faster. So I can increase the speed to two and they will all update together. As long as they have the same number of tabs with the same names, they should be able to link directly like that. If we made each of these individually and we started really kind of messing around with them, you might not be able to line them all up, but most of the time uh, you can, especially if you're copying stuff like that. Now, this is a good place to talk about our time offset. I'm going to slow that down a little. Um, and let's look at our time offset. We talked about this a little bit in the base tab, but I think it's even more relevant in the noise tab here. So we can add in different time offsets and let's use, you <clears throat> excuse me let's use the num trick and that is if we type in n u m it's like typing in the index of the object so the cube is at the top so that's num 0 num 1 and num 2 but what that means is we can do math so i can type in num times 10 and now if I click on this tag, you'll see it's zero. Click on this one, it's 10. Click on this one, it's 20. So it's a good way of automatically uh, offsetting them. Now you'll see, uh, if we see any kind of, uh, of the pattern that sticks out, you can see that they're doing the exact same animation, but they're offset from each other. So we get this little dip, 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 and then peak, peak, peak. Uh, but they're all just barely offset from each other just by these, uh, by these time offsets. We can set these to smaller numbers. We can do it manually, so that's... A time offset of zero, and on this one, maybe just time offset of two, and this one is a time offset of four. And you'll barely be able to tell that they're offset at all. Maybe if we increase the speed, something crazy fast. Nah, I mean, they're just not that offset, so you couldn't see much. If I say times 10, x times 10, then you will start seeing the offset. All right, cool. Um, 
I can set that back to one. Don't need anything too crazy. Um, oh, it's still a speed four. And we don't need any time offset. Okay. Uh, we can also type in each of them having a, their own unique seed. So once again, we just go to each one individually and change the seed. Uh, or we could grab all of them and just type in num and they'll each now it's zero one and two but every seed is completely random so you see that their pattern breaks up and now they're each doing their own unique motion that has nothing to do with each other so yeah that's all working great um let's see there's definitely a lot of settings here we could always add another noise um on top of this uh but let's talk about some more settings um we talked about feedback a little bit let's talk about these settings down here which are unique or, or you know, uniform throughout all the different modifiers and that is we have a delete button, a move up button, a move down, and a duplicate. So I'm going to actually just work with our cube here to keep it simple. So if I were to duplicate this tab, it will create an exact copy of it and name it noise2. And now these are layered on top of each other. But now the second one, I could say move twice as fast. And now you'll see, I'm going to turn off those other two. Now you see that we get this nice, well, we should get a bigger wavy motion and then this quicker, more jittery one but they can both hit the same extremes. But now you see we have two tabs. Now that we have two tabs, we can talk about these other two buttons, which is move up and move down. And that's just being able to rearrange your tabs. So like we have noise two here, but let's say we want that first, just for organizational purposes, we say move up and it's gonna jump from that position to this position. Um, so pretty straightforward. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, we could duplicate, 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 have a whole bunch of them. Maybe we keep moving up, 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 and we go move down, 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 down. So it's just organizing. Uh, and then we have delete, and that will delete any individual tabs. So we can delete, 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 and now we're just back to our original noise. Now, uh, I think that covers all the basic settings for noise, except this button. If you click this button, it will bring you to the video you are currently watching. So, let us talk about the advanced settings inside of noise. So let's get, uh, we've got a nice basic animation happening here. But... Uh, let's look at uh, the first parameter here, which is our strength mode. And the strength mode actually is just a direct link to this chart right here. And what this is, is a, is a way of, it's essentially like an animated version of this parameter here, but now you don't have to add keyframes. So what that means, let's set our timeline down to 90. So it's nice and tiny. And now you see we get our, our pattern really straightforward. Uh, and we've got our noise pretty regular. Now, if we drag our power level, maybe at the end, I'm gonna pull this down. What this is saying is we have, we're at full power at zero, and then at 90, we're at no power. So we should get our nice noise animation at the beginning, and then as we get to 90, it zeroes out. In fact, let's go up to 180 frames. So now you can see that we get our noise, and then as we get to 90, it zeroes out the noise, and now it's not being applied at all. So that, this is a way of you know applying how much strength we have. Have. And it's very similar to the base tab in the case that we can loop it and ping pong it. So I can set that to ping pong. And now every 90 frames, we're going to get power and then lose power. And then get power and then lose power. In fact, why don't we set that to like 45 so we see it a little quicker. Now we'll even set our noise speed to 2. So we get a lot of noise and it goes down to 0. And then we get noise happening again. And then no power. And then noise happening again. So it's just kind of a cool way of controlling how much of the noise is being applied. Uh, I'm going to set this back to regular. Uh, we've got match timeline, so I can automatically make that jump here. So now over the course of 180 frames, we're getting this motion. Uh, and then we have different kind of presets up here. So right now we're in custom mode, but we can go to full power, which means this is default. It'll happen full power all the time. Then we have fade up, which means at the beginning there's no noise, and as time goes on, it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger until we're at full power. Then we have fade down, and then ease in. And they're all pretty self-explanatory. This one, there will be nothing. And then as we get near the end of the animation, it's going to ramp up quickly. So, and then we start getting full power. And then we get ease out. And then we have ease in and out. And of course, custom mode. If you go custom, then now you can edit that spline that you just saw and make it whatever shape you want. So right here, there would be technically no power at the beginning, but it quickly ramps up and then we see full power. All really straightforward. I'm going to go back to full power. Uh, and then we don't need to see that one anymore. And, and then that's what, uh, that's what strength mode does. And in fact, that is applied to all these different tabs, but I'll mention them in the individual videos as well. There's one last unique setting to noise, and that is the remap strength. And that's a little drop down right here. And the remap strength is, um, 
is unique to noise, and it is how... Uh, well, I mean, what we're doing is we're remapping this noise pattern. Uh, what's the best way to explain it? Um, like right now, every number along the line has just as much chance of happening. But if I were to grab maybe both these points and then I make them soft, and if I were to pull these handles out, what we're doing is we're adding essentially a manual bias. What we're saying is you can't spend a lot of time in the middle. You have to spend more time at the top and the bottom. And you'll see in our chart that we're like, we're never, we never get the squiggles in the middle. We're getting the squiggles at the top and the bottom. And we're very quickly transitioning between the two. And these can become very extreme. Like we could push them even further. We get additional points and pull these really tight. And now you'll see that this is, this isn't the pattern it's going to take. It's the odds of it being in a given position. So you see that there's like almost no transition time between these two. So where this can get useful is uh, maybe just having things peak every once in a while. I'm going to set these to linear, have it be a little more straightforward. I'm going to zero it out. What's happening now is it's always got to be at the bottom. But I can maybe add in a point, add in a point, add this little peak in here. And now what's going to happen is every once in a while, when the odds of the noise being in this particular range happen, then we're, stu we're suddenly going to shoot up. And that's how we're getting like that kind of this little crazy heartbeat monitor. It's like bing, bing, bing. It's only happening every once in a while because most of the time we're telling it to zero out. So it's it's how we remap our strength to uh, change the odds of of where the noise is appearing or when you know where the cube is going to appear based on how it's kind of like increasing the contrast of uh, of a noise. Uh, sorry, not really elegant on the noise part, but. Or the remap, but it's a it's a really advanced setting, but it can do some some nice things. And by default, it should be a nice linear line. So that's remap strength. This was strength mode and how it gets remapped on. Uh, and those combined can be really powerful using noise. Uh, and just uh, for some other examples, like noise, like noise can be applied to everything. Uh, we can. Uh, I really like. Uh, I'm going to create a cube, and on the cube, I'm going to go to our color mode and turn it on. And let's make a signal. And instead of uh, driving, say, the position, let's drive the display color. I'm going to drop that inside of here. So it's a D for display color. And now it's peaked out at white. That's what we're saying. Right now we're saying it is white all the time. If we pull this down, we're saying over from the time of 0 to 90, it's animating from black to white. We can actually pull that down at a point in the middle. And now it's going to peak at white in the center and then go back to black. Now we can add a noise. I'm going to add a noise tab. And now it's a medium gray. And it's saying you can go positive and negative. So you see we're randomly getting varied colors here. So that's that's really fun. We can crank, you know, if we crank the bias up, then we're going to start getting these really extreme colors happening. We could say only go in positive. So now it only get a little bit brighter. Um, like the, the way you can layer this stuff up on noise is really crazy. And I totally forgot about a really important setting. And that, that is when you drag in a vector. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, a cube is truly the best example in this particular circumstance. So we're going to use a cube again. I'm going to right-click and I create a signal. And we're going to drag from the cube the position... Actually, no, not position scale and rotation. We're going to drag in the scale, X, Y, and Z. So we're dragging that in. And now we're affecting the scale. I'm going to add in a noise... And in the noise, it's already got 0.5, which should be fine. I'm going to play, and now we'll see what we've got. Well, it's randomly scaling it, but it's scaling each one individually. You can see each of these is moving on its own. So we can make this a little more extreme. So that's one, one, one. And now we start getting like all this scaling, but it's kind of it's all wobbly because it's they're they're all individual. Now that we have a vector, we have another button, and the button is uniform. And if we click uniform then they're all being calculated by the same single noise channel instead of separately. And now they're scaling uniformly. So you see all these move identically to each other. Now they don't have to be, I mean, these will move together, but we could still have the scales be a little different. Like it can scale taller on the Y, but at least it's scaling at the same time that these other ones are. So maybe as, uh, yeah, so, so that works really well. Uh, so uniform keeps these things even. And then that applies to color channels and position anything. Like they'll all move together if you have uniform. I do believe that that will do it for the noise channel. So I will see you guys in the next one when we talk about sine, cosine, sawtooth, square, triangle, and bounce. Later.